Hey YouTube fam, it's your girl Gladys. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm bringing back an old series on this channel that I call Small Talk Saturdays. Initially when I started, I was doing like a lot of YouTube related content, like how to grow on YouTube, you know, how to maintain your channel, how to increase engagement. And that was back in 2020. But I always wanted Small Talk Saturdays to be more like us getting to know each other better through chit chat. So that's what we're doing. I'm bringing it back and I want it to be on a bi-weekly basis. So please try to hold me accountable in the comments, y'all, okay? Today, I'm going to talk about my teaching career and why I left after nine years and what I'm doing now. Teaching was something that was very good to me until it wasn't. <laughs> and I did share some of my thoughts in my last chit chat video from some months ago where I announced that I quit my job. Thank you so much to everyone that actually took the time to watch that video. I received a lot of love from y'all, even through DMs as well, which really surprised me and meant a lot to me. At this point in time, it's been almost a year since I left my job, which is crazy to think about. November 1st, 2021 is when I made a decision. I just wanted to go through a few different points. So there are four main reasons why I quit. And the first reason is I realized I am replaceable. And let me tell you why. Here's the story. So at the time, this was, was this 20, this was 2019. And normally towards the end of the school year, we all get contracts back, right? To let us know where we're going to be placed. My particular school had several different campuses. So I was at my campus at the time for four years and it was pretty much in my head a guarantee that I'd be back at the same campus because a lot of us have matriculated through that campus with that principal. My old principal had just left though so we had a new one but still I thought I was going to be there. Especially at this point I was considered almost a vet in a way especially because of all the work that I did at that campus. So I didn't get a contract back. And I was very surprised and confused, like, what's, what's going on? So I was told that, you know, it's nothing, it has nothing to do with your teaching ability. It's just that the school's going through some changes. And at the time, those changes were pretty significant. One of the biggest campuses shut down and they had to lay off a lot of people. But in my mind, I'm thinking, why do they have to lay me off? You know, like that's basically what was happening. But they tried to frame it in a way where it's like, no, we're not laying you off. We're just putting you with this group of people that we really want back, but we just don't have a place for. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, I've been with y'all since 2013. Like, why don't you have a place for me? You know, it was disheartening. But what made it worse is that earlier that year, there was a young lady that was sent to my classroom. She was a brand new teacher to the school. And because she was thrown into an environment with no teaching experience, they were like, hey, Miss M, let's just say that's my name, Miss M, we're gonna have this teacher come to your classroom and observe you since you do really good work. Cool. She came through, observed, had a great time, and we actually ended up exchanging information and we would stay in contact like probably on a monthly basis. So then she contacts me, this is after I realized I wasn't getting a contract back for my campus or for the school in general. And she's like, Miss M, guess what? I'm being placed at your school. Oh my God, we can like work together next year. It's gonna be so great. And I looked at that message and I was just like, How is it that this new teacher who has no experience is being placed at my campus? Like, is she taking my place? Like, what's, what's going on? I kept it cool. I didn't say anything. I just congratulated her. I didn't tell her what was going on. But it really made me think, like, y'all really just, y'all just don't care. <laughs> Y'all really don't give a fuck about me and all the work that I had to do, especially during the year when we had a brand new principal and myself and another teacher who were mentor teachers that year had to step in and basically be like vice principals that school year. But it seemed like all of that work was for naught and it hurt my feelings. I remember that summer. I just spent the summer traveling. <laughs> that was the summer that I went to Thailand with C and I was in New York and yeah i didn't have much of a plan but then they called me back and because that was the year of my 30th birthday that was coming up and i had a party planned and i was like i need a job i took the job back but 
it really left a bad taste in my mouth and I feel like that was truly the beginning of the end. Number two, the second reason why I quit my nine year teaching career is because, honey, do we? Let's talk about the money. Now, I lucked out in that I work in a district that is known to pay their teachers better than other districts. I'm in Washington, DC. And if you're a DC educator, hey girl, what's up? How you doing? So, I felt lucky and I remember when I reached the point where I was making $60,000 and I felt like, oh my god, I made it, I'm doing so well, I'm taking care of myself, I have my own place, like, this is great. But, girl, <laughs> then I found out, shortly before that point, I, f I remember we found out, the year that we all found out that we were all making different rates but had all been there the same amount of time, it felt like all hell broke loose. There was one teacher making 52. I think at the team I was making 55. Someone else was making 47. We were all very confused. <laughs> like, what's going on? Are they trying to play us? Yes. I think it just goes to show that, one, in general, especially with women of color, we are not taught how to negotiate and advocate for ourselves when it's time to talk money. This is something I had to learn on my own later on and really within my content creator journey. But at the time, I didn't really know anything about that. Like, every time they gave me my contract, I accepted what I was given. But then I found out that there were other teachers that would push back and sometimes ask for more. Sometimes they got it, sometimes they didn't. It just depended on how much, I guess, they valued you there. But at the end of the day, it always feels like as a teacher, no matter how much you contribute to the conglomerate, you are replaceable your money can go to someone else and they don't give a damn like they will just keep it moving and it sucks to say that but that's just what i started to realize and then i'm like yo i'm doing double the work i have fellows that are underneath me learning from me and i'm still getting a raise of two thousand a year before taxes you know like and I know there are some people who are not making 60K. They might be at 30K and they're like, oh, I wish I could make that much money. I mean, I think we all feel that way in some ways. Like we see someone who makes more than us and we aspire for that. But it doesn't mean that it always equals up to the work that you're doing. And I was doing a lot. I'm sure a lot of you who are educators know like the grind is real. Like, sometimes you're staying at work late. You're taking work home, which I had to stop doing. I put my foot down after probably year five but when I think of who I was like year one through four like why that is why 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 for 40 45 50 thousand dollars I don't know it just we all know that teachers should be paid more right but that's a whole other video so once I realized through my content creation journey how much money people were making like I started developing friendships with people who were in the space for longer and had bigger followings than me and they would be very transparent about what they were making and I was like what are you kidding me like this person is making double sometimes triple of my teacher salary and we're doing some of the same things so that really opened my eyes and I was like you know what my my mindset has been so limited my money mindset was trash. I remember when making $100,000 seemed like the pinnacle. And I'm just like, what? I, I feel like becoming a content creator and realizing like as an entrepreneur, there is no real ceiling. It's like, yes, that's cool to have, have it as a goal, but it doesn't have to be a limit. And I feel like that's how I was looking at it as as if like once i reach this i'm like i've made it i'm good not even taking into account how my lifestyle might change over the years as i get older so i was like you know what i'm not working for pennies anymore i gotta figure something else out now the third reason that i left my teaching career is because come on elephant in the room covid 19 When we got back in that classroom, y'all, I literally just wanted to cry. 
I wanted to cry because I was looking around and I had a lot of students that didn't know how to put on masks because I was teaching the youngest group, so ages three to five. It was their first time being around people in, in a year and a half and they were scared, they were tired, they were crying and they were coughing and sneezing and spitting some of them. Yes, I did have a student that was spitting and that was, that was crazy because he didn't want to wear a mask. But I was like, am I really dealing with this right now like is this really life I dealt with a lot of stuff being a teacher but COVID really took it to a different level and even with the supports that I was given at that time it no longer was worth it to me like the love I had was slowly dying actually quickly dying <laughs> once I got back in the classroom it started to fade but I was enjoying the virtual aspect of teaching I know I hear a lot of colleagues say that they didn't enjoy it but for me personally I ended up having a really great class great parents and my team was solid so I had a positive virtual experience during COVID but getting back in the classroom was a different story and also during that time I was doing a lot more with my content creation and I just realized that the classroom was no longer for me but it took me having to go back into the classroom to really cement that idea in my head and once I got it y'all I got it <laughs> I had to go and I'll never forget I um I always had like a bunch of PTO so this particular time I had like two weeks of PTO and I was planning on riding the school year out but the thing with COVID looming over me was bothering me. I hated the fact that we were in quarantine like every other week, like probably twice a month we were in qu quarantine. And then students at the time were not required to be tested in order to come back in the classroom. And I was just like, what kind of bullshit? Who is making up these rules? This doesn't make any sense. Y'all, they, they, they did not pay us enough to deal with what we had to deal with especially with the young ones and if you work with the younger age groups sound off in the comments let me know what your experience has been or even if you worked with higher grades just let me know what your COVID teaching experience was because I, I know I'm not alone and that's another reason why I put out this video because I'm hoping that this kind of helps someone touches someone and maybe facilitates them moving forward like i did so the fourth reason and probably the most important reason why i quit my nine year teaching career is ultimately i found a new love i literally fell madly in love with creating content on youtube i started my channel on january 21st it was mlk day 2019 and i hit the ground running and i was growing at a really good rate at that time at least that's what people were telling me and I just totally fell in love with the process mind you the whole filming thing is not really new to me because I did go to Howard University and major in radio TV and film as well as French by junior and senior year I was always creating some type of short film editing something script writing I was doing those things already in college but I thought I had lost interest in all that after college because I started teaching and I fell in love with teaching. But it seems, it's just so funny how things are full circle because now I'm back doing all those things that I was learning about when I was in school at Howard. And I, I love it because I feel like I'm doing things on my terms, I'm creating content that I like, that my audience likes. It feels very in sync. You know, me and you, us and we, I feel like we are here. <laughs> So I thank y'all for rocking and supporting with me because I feel the love every single day. Every time I put out a video and y'all comment, man. But yes, this process, it became the new love of my life. And I was borderline obsessed at one point, which caused the burnout, which I actually did a video on that when I took like a two month break from YouTube and I talked about how I wasn't okay. So if you want to see that video, you know, I'll link it in the cards above. You can check that out. But I just fell in love with being a creator and showing women how to make their wigs look natural and just really encouraging women to be their best selves and to just feel confident in what they were doing. You know, I started off with the hair and the wigs, but I transitioned into doing more fashion. I started vlogging last year. I just started incorporating more things that resemble where I am in life right now. And I'm still going through that process. You'll notice on my channel that 
I'm putting out some different content and I hope that you're here for it. And if you're not, that's okay too. But for those who stick around and support, that really means a lot to me. So falling in love with YouTube has to be <laughs> one of the best things that, have, that has happened to me because it allowed me freedom. It granted me access to a new dimension in a way. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was possible to work for myself. I didn't know I could be an entrepreneur. I never wanted to run a business. I always was very intimidated by that. I always felt like, oh, that's for people who, you know, go to business school and get their masters in it and, you know, have some type of background. I just never thought it was for me. But I guess I realized over time that those were just fears that were infiltrating my mind that needed to be eradicated quickly. And it, it didn't happen quickly though, it happened over time. And in part it happened thanks to all of you who support me, who give me feedback, who, you know, have convinced me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I really feel like I've fallen into my vocation, honestly, through creating content here on YouTube. So this has been amazing. Even with the, the darker times and sadder times and lonely times and staying up late and rushing to complete things and feeling like I'm working 12 hours in a day sometimes. I would not trade in this freedom that I have for anything. The fact that my aunt who was diagnosed with stage zero breast cancer this summer, I was still able to like, I went to New York like four times in like a month and a half. Just because I felt like I needed to be at home after that happened. And it was a little scary, but it turned out fine. Thank y'all for the prayers because I saw y'all praying on my community posts. I would not have been able to do that, travel in that way, if I was still in the classroom. So yeah, y'all, I, I just wanted to come on here and just lay out why I love teaching. Overall, I would say that it no longer was for me. I still consider myself a teacher. I'm just doing it on a different platform. I feel like now, Yes, I've been teaching women how to style their wigs and make bolder fashion choices, but I also feel like I'm teaching women how to be themselves. At least that's what I hope that you get from my content. And I'm just looking forward to seeing how the rest of this pans out. So if you are an educator, or if you're in a job that when you go to bed at night, you feel like, damn, I don't wanna be here. I don't wanna wake up and go to this place. That's your sign to leave. I know it's easier said than done. And trust me, I did a lot of preparation when it came to leaving my nine to five and I talk about it in my other video that'll be linked in my description box. But it's been so worth it. To me, time is our highest currency. And right now I feel like I'm cashing the fuck out. <laughs> in a way that I would have never been able to being an educator in the classroom. So yes, y'all, this is my story. I've been wanting to get this off my chest for a while. And as my one year anniversary approaches of being a full-time content creator, I just knew I had to like let this go so I can really move on because some days it doesn't feel real. Like when I wake up and I'm able to like take my time in the morning, make breakfast, talk to my girlfriend C. I can work out if I want to before starting to work. I could take a little midday nap if I want to. I can just really, I can just really do things my way. And I'm super grateful for that. And it's all thanks to the work that I've put in and the community that I've built here. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for rocking with your girl. Is that your hair? Your girl Gladys, by the way, is that your hair? Has a time limit, okay? That name is going to expire sooner than later. I just, I've been feeling this way for almost a year now. I just don't know what I want to rebrand myself as. Do I want to use my name? Do I want to use a pseudonym? I'm still figuring that part out. 
you can let me know your thoughts in the comments though if this video helped you if you took something from this or if you just enjoyed listening to my story please talk to me let's chat in the comments thank you so much and if you're new here i hope you stay along for the ride we are at we're over 35,000 subscribers on youtube which i'm super stoked about on our way to 40k let's get it <laughs> and small talk saturday like i said is going to be a regular thing 20 dollars tuesday is also back consistent for small talk saturdays though leave me some video ideas things that you want me to kind of talk about on this channel because i want it to be like girl talk like we're just relaxing kicking it maybe next time i'll bring us some wine would y'all like that <laughs> And if you're sober, just drink water. But yeah, y'all, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Love you. Bye.